for them to sort of connect a little bit as a group, which is what every coach always wants your kids to be able to do when you play as a team, you know, the connection. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's something I incorporated into training. So, so we had, we'd have a little bit of time in the beginning of practice where I'd set up just a little, like a little informal training game where, you know, I wouldn't coach them. They could just kick the ball around and talk to each other, catch up. But, but a, a funny thing is, is that everyone's wearing masks, right? And uh, you go not seeing teenage boys for a year. Some grew six inches, some put on 50 pounds. So, so some hair got curly, long or short. So yeah, everyone, yeah. a lot of people didn't know who some kids were. So that, that, that was, and I didn't either. So, 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 so that, was kind of, that was kind of interesting. Um, and and just, just the whole mask thing, I, I was really impressed at how quickly they adjusted. You know, there's some complaining maybe for the first day or two, and then, Everyone just played. It was never mentioned again after the first, probably the second day. It never even came up again. Just that, that was just the way it was. And, and I'd say our kids were probably the best of all the teams we played at keeping the mask up. Um, and they just adjusted to it. So. Well, you know, I noticed that when we were doing basketball, I noticed that when the mask came down underneath the nose, that literally what the ref would do is he'd blow the whistle the kid had to go out for two. It, it was only two minutes of regular two minutes, not two minutes of game time, <laughs> but two minutes. And ma- it just made it an inconvenience where it was a reminder to the kids on the court that if you don't protect your mask and if I catch you, I'm going to have you go off and readjust and everything. And that they were they were really strict about it. And it was only like four or five refs that did that. But it was just a way to sort of set an example to the kids that they needed to learn that this is what is this is what the norm is now for at least this year, you know. So yeah, I think I we only that only happened in our very first game where where, where kids were were blow the whistle, pulled out, had to pull their mask on, could come back in later. So so that, you know, no one wants that to happen. That's very disruptive. And then, yep. um, then maybe your coach won't put you back in for a while. So. Well, that's another thing where you don't think about it is the coach gets so caught up in what's going on on the field. He forgets about the kid who ended up just having just what they call a mask violation. Right. <laughs> right. So, so you, don't, you, you, know? don't that, you don't want that to happen when you're in there. So, so, so I, I thought it just was a non-issue. Um, we were a little fortunate. Um, from playing in fall two as opposed to fall. So some of the, some of the um, restrictions went away or lightened, like uh, corner kicks. But I'm telling you, Bobby, um, we were, I was talking about it with my assistant coach. I've never seen so many kids get hit the ball in the Adam's apple because the ball comes up and they think they're going to head it. They realize they can't head it and they try to chest it and yeah. it in the neck. So, so, so it was, uh, that, that's never happened before. So that, that, was, that created a few awkward moments. Um, Definitely. Yeah, but 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 uh, that that's you know you train your whole life on how to play a certain way, and I teach you, and all your other coaches taught you a certain way, and now you can't do that. Um, so so I think some of those like um, just instinctive things that they yep. do when the ball comes, I think that was very difficult because you can't really you know when the whistle blows, you're going to kick the ball in or throw the ball in. You can like stop and think about that, but when the ball's in the air. It, that's your instincts take over at that point. So. Very true. You know, another thing I noticed is I noticed that um, there was certain schools, like for an example, the Franklin County Tech Boys team, I noticed that they had number issues where they were having issues with numbers. And it ended up like literally making it so that some of the games were like, what, nine on nine or, or even eight on eight, where it really opens up the field. Did you guys have a situation like that where you had to play with uh, less players because of another team that didn't have enough players, or were you able to play the full way the whole time? Yeah, I, I offered I offered that, and, and they just wanted they had ten um, with us. So they may have ended up eleven until the game was over. But what I did instead is, is I played seventh and eighth graders. I played three or four seventh and eighth graders, just kind of rounded out. So that's that's something I've never done in my entire life. Um, I've had a few eighth graders play in the past, but it wasn't necessarily meaningful minutes. Um, I had, I had their eighth graders that contributed so much. They got varsity letters. Um, that's awesome. And I was just going to bring that up to you. <laughs> I was just going to bring it up to you because of the fact that I want people to understand that a lot, pretty much every school had no middle school. There was no right. middle school sports. So right. if the school was willing to offer the kids an opportunity to move up and play, 
either JV or to play varsity to be able to get minutes. It was, that was what's, that was the only way the kids were going to play. That would hit you. That was it. And then, then it's up to you to make sure that the other schools are going to be able to get enough kids for JV. So you guys can all have enough for JVs to play each other. You know, you can't, you, you can't have two schools that only have JV kids. That's enough to fill a field. And then the other schools say, Oh, I don't have enough. So I can't, I, we're not going to have a JV team. Now, Everyone's got to play varsity, and that makes it even harder for you as a coach because you got to try to figure out how you're going to give all these kids time, and that's very hard to do in a, a situation where you're literally taking a full program like middle school, which has their own team, and you got to try to fit it into your team. That's not fair, you know? Yeah, l- last three years we had varsity, JV, and middle school, Bobby. So, so, yes. so there's a lot less kids came out this year. Some because of no tournament. Some because they didn't think they'd get a chance to play as a seventh, eighth, or ninth grader. Um, that, that turned out to not be the case. You know, we had you know in a shortened season, you have some injuries too. You have the last week of our season was during vacation, so some kids didn't really think about it and went away on vacation. So. Um, you're just, you're just different, but I got to tell you, um, you know, our three eighth graders that played the most, they just stepped in and they did everything correctly. Right. So, so not only do you have to try to find minutes for these guys, you also want to put them in a situation where one, they can have success and two, they're not going to get hurt or limit their chances. You know, you exactly. get hurt stepping out of a curve, but, but you don't want to put them into dangerous situations. Um, and, and I think our seniors, all of our seniors did a very, very good job of integrating younger kids in and making them feel comfortable. So, so, so I think everyone had a, a had a good experience this year. So. And I gotta say, I you know I I announced I announced everything that happened in all your games on my show every week. And Pioneer beginning of the year, a little bit on the sluggish side, but boy, down the end, you guys really came. You guys were the horse that came in strong at the end. You definitely did. You guys were. You guys made your way around the track and be able to found your way on the home stretch. And what a nice way to end the season. That's a great way to end, though. You know. Well, it was really fun. The last two games, what were were against Smith and uh, Academy and Hopkins Academy, and those were, you know, Smith Academy Frontier, one, two, three, three, two, one, whatever. They were all really good teams. Um, and we scared the lights out of both Smith and Hopkins. Um, you did. You so, did. So, I mean, so, so that was fun. And we played at night, so it actually felt like a tournament game. Um, so everyone was a little more ramped up. I was a little more ramped up, and it was it, it was a lot of fun. So, so we didn't win out of those games but i tell you it was fun it was fun to coach the kids were motivated and uh you know i talked to both coaches after the game and they they, they were they were concerned definitely so yeah so, so, and it, you know it was it was fun as a coach because you don't have the numbers maybe to put in new personnel so you got to slightly switch the formation around maybe you put a a Jared Hubbard in a different position for speed or a Josh or, you know, move some people around a little bit to give a different look. And it was, it was fun, particularly against Hopkins um, because I could see him react, but it would take him a little bit to react to change it. And then I'd try to change it. So it was, it was kind of like the little game within the game is, is actually quite fun. And, and uh, when you have a competitive game, you can do that. When it's not competitive, it doesn't make any difference. Um, right but no but that's very but in the games like those that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun and, and uh you know for the people that saw zach pizik you know he really did a fantastic job i couldn't i couldn't be more proud of that kid not not having played varsity not having played indoor soccer outdoor soccer for four years to come back and play and like really have an impact so, so that was pretty impressive and you know what was even more impressive is the fact that you know he really kept you guys in a lot of games. I mean, the yeah. way he was able to play and the goal, I mean, he really kept you in a lot of those games to give you guys an opportunity. Another kid who came on strong was Glazier. Joshie was uh, on fire at the end of the season. I mean, your last couple of weeks, he really started to pour it on, you know, two, sometimes almost an opportunity at three goals in a game. I mean, that that surely helps your team a lot when your goaltender's playing well, too. I mean, that gives you guys a chance to be in those games like you were against Smith Academy and Hopkins, two very good soccer programs for sure. Yeah, we had, we had strength down the, down the middle all season, and that, then we got some, some uh, strength in the width, which, you know, when you can go wide, it opens up the middle. And, uh, 
you know, we tried to, you know, as coaches, as players, as teams, to create opportunities. You know, I mean, you know, in soccer, you can even see the pros are missing that by 20 feet sometimes. It just, the ball bounces. The fields weren't probably the best, except for Maha the turf. The fields weren't in the best shape, so the ball might move a little bit. And, you know, Josh had, had opportunities early in the season, too. And it's, you know, you just keep faith in the kids and just kind of get them to relax and trust themselves. I trust you. You know, just we trust you. to Just relax and it will come. Um, and it did. So so he, he kept at it. He didn't alter his game. Um, and then the goals started coming. So I felt we were – we were just getting in gear for for the second half of the season. <laughs> so. Exactly. But I think a lot of teams were feeling that way, though, too, Don, you know. Absolutely. I think a lot of the schools were knowing that the kids were all coming back. There's going to be some adjustments. We've never and it been in a situation where we're playing, you know, we're starting to practice here during the month of March. I mean, that's very different, you know. The yeah. kids are always used to practicing all summer because they're getting prepared to be able to start school ball that starts in September. So like you say, when the kids are already starting to play, it's, it's, it could be 90 out, you know, right. it could be degrees out. And now you're, now you're dealing with 19 degrees out. So it, it's a big difference, you know, Com completely different. Kids weren't able to like go to the park on their own and kick the ball around. Um, so, so they weren't, you know, you're basically coming from some kids are playing at indoor action, but it's just a different feel from outside. The ball moves differently. Um, so, so yeah, you know, kids weren't able to get that little bit of work in and, and running. It's funny because we've done some conditioning in August at Pioneer and, and half the team was at a six minute mile in the fall. And then I don't think they ever ran again until the season started. So, wow. so we were ready wow. to go. Um, you really had them. You really had them in good shape for sure. Ready. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and we're not the only team, he, he, you know, so, so, you know, our seniors like Cam Dresser, I thought, you know, last year was his first year with soccer. And, and since he was young and he turned himself into a soccer player, um, he really, really worked hard. Um, you know, we were led by our captain, Sam Cahill and a senior and Jason Quinn Jr., um, you know, our other seniors, uh, Liam Bradley Curtis, Brad Norwood, and Dan Kang, he got hurt in the Greenfield game, so he was never 100% again, but uh, that he was a difference maker. He got hurt during the Smith game, re injured his hamstring, and 30 seconds after he came out, Smith had the go ahead goal. So, so, um, oh, it, it's those little things. Every team goes through it, Bobby, as you know, in every sport, so, so, so like the little. In our small schools, one kid has a has a huge impact. You know, the other thing I learned about this whole phase two of the winter sports season is that the kids just wanted to play. I mean, yeah. I just noticed that, like you said, the kids adjusted. I think they adjusted better than the parents. I think the parents were more worried about the kids than the kids were worried about this new adjustment, you know? Yeah. You know, when the parents are thinking soccer, they're thinking hard ground, they're thinking my kid's going to get hurt. They're going to get a concussion. I mean, this is all what goes through the minds of parents. But the kids are like, get me out of this house, you know? So 100%. 100%. Everyone wanted to play. They're Like we talked about at the beginning, they're happy to see each other. But just getting a chance to play. Um, and I talked to every coach, um, too, that we played against. And everyone felt the same way. We were just happy that we had a chance to play. Because, because you know, maybe in July, August, we didn't know if we'd get to play a single game. and. We got to play eight games, so so I mean that's 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 better than than we thought. Not as good as we'd hoped, of course, but I mean, yeah, I feel fortunate we were able to play. And and, and I got to tell you, once we got out there, especially Friday, last Friday and Saturday night, it's been It just it just felt normal, you know. We just played soccer. Mother Nature treated you guys pretty well too. Mother yeah, Nature came lucky. through. Mother Nature came through with some pretty nice days. Really, she really did. You know. And the snow ended. The snow ended early, so 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 we were we were lucky all around there. So yeah, we had our fingers crossed. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You know, the other thing I have a question on, and I'm curious about your feeling on this. But my only problem is it's already failed twice, and now they're trying to do it again. I noticed that they're trying to see if maybe trying to get football back in over at Pioneer again. They're working on trying to do it. Is that going to really affect anything to do with your soccer program because kids knew that they weren't able to play football and sort of came over and transitioned into playing for you instead? Absolutely. 
absolutely. I, I think that made a difference for us in the past. Um, in golf too, I think you might remember a gentleman by the name of Garrett Cody, right? Absolutely, I remember <laughs> when Garrett moved over. I do, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so go golf went away, so he came over for the senior year and popped in twelve goals. Um, because he's a true really, athlete. Yeah. Yeah, he had a gigantic impact. So yeah, so 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 there's kids. I know there's middle schoolers that had been soccer players that aren't. Um, I mean, I to totally feel kids should be able to do what they want to do. Um, but, but of course, on a selfish side, you know, there's some kids that I that will never get to know. And, and uh, you know, I always think back to Garrett Cody that just came out his senior year and he always wished he'd played a couple more years. Um, so, so, cause he had a huge impact in one season. If he had played more, even bigger impact. Um, uh, for us small schools, it, it, it's hard. It, it's hard. It's hard all over. So, so I don't know. I know they had, I saw pretty good numbers um, with the middle school. Um, yeah, and Coach Berg, the one thing I can say about Coach Richberg, he's really put a lot of time in. He, he really cares about those kids. He cares about those kids. And, you know, you look back and you have to remember that Pioneer, they, they had a couple of years under the Dupree years that were pretty damn impressive too, you know, and they, they made some noise. And it was – pretty cool for them to say that they were in a super bowl you know yeah and that's pretty neat i mean that's pretty neat to be able to say that a school that literally abolished their football program back in the late 70s was able to bring something back and and now unfortunately it just seems like we're struggling to be able to get kids to play almost anything for sports in this area don we're really down in numbers you'll never see the day of cutting kids i just don't see it happening in this new era, I just don't. No, not at mostly schools. And, and, and Rich is a tremendous just person. Um, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And, Love and that guy. Know, I've known him for a few years and always gracious, loves the kids, loves the game, what he's doing. Um, so, 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 man, I wish him the best and the sport the best. It's just, in all honesty, it's difficult to do two um Team sports that require 11 players on the field at any one time. It really does. Um, it does, especially in this new era where yeah. we're not getting kids to come participate. We're not. Correct. We're, you know, I mean, I used to, I, I'm telling stories to some of these little leaguers, and we were just joking around yesterday, and I was telling them that my varsity baseball team, we ended up having 44 kids go out for only 18 positions. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. we got cut. It was literally a cut program, you know, yeah. and, and they're like, there was cuts. I said, oh, yeah, there was more tears that you couldn't believe. And they're like, we can't even get kids to come play for us. We're like begging in the hallways to yeah. be able to get kids to play. Yeah, that's the truth in all the schools. I mean, Greenfield was a powerhouse back then um, yep. when we were in school in all sports, every sport. Um, yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah, there's cuts all over the place. It's a, so, you know, we're not going to experience experience that <laughs> here. Um, but but it, it's, it does – make it different too so so like i i feel you need 16 high school players um to, to really be competitive in soccer um and this year was a little different because we were able to put put in some three eighth graders that will be probably starters next year as freshmen um and not just for us it'd be that way for any any school and they're going to be killer basketball players it, it, it's that class is that class, the eighth grade class at Pioneer is incredibly athletic. Um, those are the kids we had in Greenfield. Here. Those are the kids we had in Greenfield minor league baseball, bud. Yep. Those yep. kids that you have are the same kids that we had in Greenfield minor league baseball. And we're dealing with like my nephew, Jackson Campbell and, and that, and the Quinn brothers. And, yep. and we got, you know, all those kids all came through Greenfield minor league baseball where, where we were the Glaziers. And yeah. so, you you have been able to literally get a group of kids who all really love each other. I mean, yes. it's wonderful that they're all from different towns, but they all still have a huge connection. It's great. It really uh, is. That's, that's the biggest difference. You know, all successful teams that I've coached, um, you know, Pioneer would be the, the, the 2017, 2018 teams in the semifinals. But all successful teams I've coached everywhere, even in Florida, they really like each other. You know, the successful teams we've watched, the Bruins, you know, the Red Sox in 2004, they loved each other. Um, and and yep. that's that's how you make a team. 
And that's how, you know, you're, you're giving that little extra bit for your teammate, for your friend, for your brother, for your sister. Um, that's what makes these, these local sports fun, these small schools. That's what makes coaching fun. So let me ask you the funnest thing right here. You were able to keep kids active during the beginning of the year. Now they're going to take a little time off. They got a little baseball, softball thingy going on. Then you get them right back for summer to be able to get them right into it. You guys could go into the season in the fall in great in a great position. Really, you, you this is sort of like a good little piece that added to your year of 2021. You know, it's a nice piece. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that's you know we we started uh, August 23rd, I think, so we're less than four months away from our season, which. You know, I've been talking about for last month. Is hey, we started four months. Um, I know. So, so I mean, that's that's going to go by incredibly. Usually, it's ten months. Um, so, so now that four months will be very quickly. You're right. They'll get through baseball, have a few weeks to rest their body, recover. Then, boom, it's right, it's right at conditioning, getting ready to go. And summer soccer or or or, or what, what, whatever they're doing, um, we'll, yep. be, we'll be playing before you know it. So yeah, I think we'll get right on the roll. Kids are kids ended the season incredibly excited. So. Oh, and and you ended and you ended against two very good schools to be competitive with. Uh, and what I love is the fact that you just said I had three eighth graders that came up and played sort of by default, but boy, <laughs> it helped our team. And that's that's just incredible, you know. Help the team, you know. They got points, you know, and they they made their impact players on defense. And you know, their eyes were a little big in the the first time or two in, but. Not anymore. They they felt they belong. They looked like they belong. Um, and now you get that out of the way. They come in as freshmen and they'll they'll be good to go. So I feel they've actually jumped. You know, they're gonna come in and play like sophomores, not like freshmen. Well, let me tell you, you do have some great athletes over there right now, Pioneer. I mean, you really do. There's some great athletic kids there. But I also like the fact that they have their great friendships and those friendships always help when it comes to being able to support each other. I've always looked at that with the basketball program with Scotty. I've always said that Scotty has been able to keep this group of kids to be able to be tight, you know, and, and it's shown over the years and how good the sports program has been over at pioneer. And now you're being able to say, Hey, you don't think as a coach, I don't mind that I have three eighth graders that I might be able to start Next year as freshmen, now that's going to give me four more years with these kids. I get four more years with these guys. Yeah, it, it, it's absolutely incredible. And like like the weirdness of the soccer world here um, is how we're so regional pulling. So so every team, Frontier, I have coached most of those kids. Hopkins, a handful, Smith, a bunch, Green, a bunch. So, yep. so, so they weren't all, too bad they weren't all with me here, but it was it was really fun. Um, to be able to see kids I've coached perform well in other programs. And, and the, the, the chemistry that our team developed is you're 100% right because they really cared about each other. You have um, Gavin Gamel, an eighth grader, coming up, and, and someone makes him a pass, and he makes the right pass correctly instantly. Um, so, so but he loves but he loves soccer. He loves soccer. Yep. You know what's funny is his parents wanted him to play Little League, and Gavin didn't want to play Little League. He wanted <laughs> to play basketball, and he wanted to play soccer. That's great. And you know what? I'm so glad that, you know, Billy and Rick gave him that chance because he's really shined as a player in both of those sports. Yep, great really kid, great family. I mean, that that's what I can say about the kids at Pioneer. Great kids and great families. And it's, you know, I, 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 just, I just feel support from everybody. I know other coaches have told me, they get some different feedback. I do not get that. I get yeah. positive all around. Well, you know, you got to remember now they got a good coach too. And the, and the, <laughs> the parents and the kids respect you too, Don. I mean, you've been doing this a long time, buddy. Yes, sir. And, yes, sir. you know, you've put in a lot of years and dedication into the sport and all the community here in this area, because you know how much we love Berniston Northfield. It's the best. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, I love it here. I, I think it's great. This is a great community here. Perfect. And, you know, the people are nice. The kids are wonderful. And the most important thing that I've noticed is doing sports with being able to do high school basketball and being able to do softball and baseball and doing that with the radio. I built a lot of friendships with the families here. And it's yeah. been wonderful because the sports community really just wants to give the kids something to do. And if you ask most parents, that's really what it's about is giving the kids something to do. Yep. And once they start realizing that this could be a lot of fun, 
all of a sudden the connections all start to work together. And I've always said this about Scotty Fair, that group of eighth graders that you talked about that are great athletes, wait till they go on the basketball court. They're going to be incredible when they're seniors. I'm telling you right now. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're and, seeing some big action in tournament ahead. In, in oh, for wicked. Sure. Yeah. His yeah, own kid, figures. you know, Braden's going to be a great athlete. You know, you look at uh, Josh Wood. I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, you got some great kids that are all just involved in that group of great athletes up there. So, well, see, see, all that is fun. Brian and I were at Holy Trinity together, Josh's father. So, I mean, it, it's yeah. good to get back yeah. in this area. But, uh, Bobby, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Hey, you did a great job, and I really appreciate you sort of informing everybody on exactly what's really going on out there. And the other big thing that I want people to understand is that when you're dealing with high school sports, you know, each kid has a different way of how they want to learn, and each kid has a different way on how their ability level is. Oh, yeah. And the one thing about a coach is, is a guy like you, you have to be able to take each kid for an individual of